بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین السلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سو ٹوڈے وی ار کورنگ دا ٹاپک اف ویلنٹائنز ڈے دا ڈارک سائڈ وی ڈیڈ دی کلاس ان اور ٹو یسٹرڈے اینڈ ناؤ آئی وانٹڈ ٹو کمپلیٹ دس ٹاپک آن دا ڈے اف 14 فیبرری بیکاز اوبویسلی اف وی کنڈکٹ دا کلاس آفٹر ویلنٹائن ڈے ہیز بین پاس دیر واز یو نو اٹ واز سپوز ٹو بی یوز لیس so valentine day the dark side we we all know very well that we have been listening about we have been hearing about this day since we were young all of us um it has been promoted on uh, mainstream media on social media electronic print media and um, there is a there is like continuously increasing uh, you know um promotion of this day uh, both on the media and if we go out we see outside young couples and even the shops and the restaurants the salons the clinics everywhere even the uh, you know the uh, different brands selling shoes and clothes they are setting up promotions regarding discounts on this day the valentines day especially on the perfumes chocolates and flowers so let's see what is the reality of valentines day we will see the reality of valentines day from the uh disbelievers perspective we will see some research in today's class from disbelievers perspective it's not just the muslims who are uh, against this day but there are uh, a lot of disbelievers christians pagans and jews who are um, doing research about this uh, day and they are publishing their researches and their uh, claims of damaging the um, the emotional and the psychological health of the people which is connected with this valentine day so we will be studying the uh, perspective from the social and scientific uh, point of view and also from the stoic point of view so let's start our class we always start our class with the aya from the quran today i have selected this aya from uh, surah al isra aya number 32 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not go near adultery it is truly a shameful deed and an evil way again this aya we have been through many times we might have uh, read its translation as well but we sometimes when we go through the translation of the quran or the tafsir we do not actually realize where this aya could be connected in our daily life routine so uh, if we see this aya we know that there are different crimes or different sins in islam where allah subhanahu wa taala has specifically prohibited such as the sin of lying or backbiting or murder or stealing something or taking riba so these kind of sins where allah subhanahu wa taala has directly ordered not to uh, indulge into these sins but if we look at the sin of adultery or uh, you know the uh, shameful deeds and the uh, the you know the zina and these kind of things this ayah shows that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that don't even go near it so not just prohibiting the sin itself but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically blocking the ways that divert our ways towards this sin from this ayah we know that later on uh, uh, because this ayah is connected to the individual perspective of one's deeds and also uh, the social aspect like at individual level allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited Uh, any person any muslim man or woman to indulge in anything that leads its way to zina or badkari or adultery and similarly at social level this aya also applies because socially a society is supposed to stay away from all those acts or promoting all those things which leads the way towards um the shamelessness or adultery and fornication in at social level so we know that after this ayah there, there were different orders from allah to subhanahu wa taala that were being uh, sent to prophet peace be upon him as we can read it in quran um, or we know that there were ayahs related to the uh, hijab which were sent uh, just because the women were then given a list of mahrams and namahrams to hide their adornment to hide their beauty from the namahram men just uh, to again block the way that would lead to sedu- seduction or to that would lead to the way of fornication and adultery similarly uh, then the wine and uh, the intoxicants were prohibited uh, different uh, orders regarding the uh, music and dance and free mixing of males and females were uh, sent down especially when prophet peace be upon him migrated to medina then in medina there was this society which was set up as first islamic society so different orders regarding the um sexual life and the uh, you know the uh, things related to fornication adultery and these things different orders were sent down 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, adultery is not just one act. It is a series of acts from minor sins. It starts with the very small things and from minor sins, it eventually leads to the major sin of adultery or fornication. Uh, and we know that in uh, Islam, uh, uh, any unmarried man or woman who um, indulges in this thing is, uh, uh, you know, the, the hudud that is applied, uh, the punishment is of lashes. And then um, I'm just mixing, it's like 100 lashes or 80 lashes, but uh, there is a, for an unmarried couple, uh, they are uh, supposed to be punished this way. And for a married couple who indulges into the act of fornication or adultery, they are supposed to be stoned to death. This is the punishment. And uh, again, different um, orders regarding the punishments of fornication and also slandering chaste women uh, for, the, for this act of fornication. Uh, the slandering punishments were also advised. So one needs to have four um, witnesses for, to label someone as uh, doing an act of fornication. So again, these all things were sent down to guide a, a society regarding this act of adultery and all the ways that leads to it. So this is a very important ayah as we will see that when we will uh, move forward in our presentation, you will further uh, get a clarification about this ayah. So let's look at the history of Valentine Day. Let us start with this festival, which is called as Lupercalia Festival. Lupercalia, uh, uh, apparently we see that whenever we talk to someone, someone about Valentine's Day, we hear that people usually say it's a very innocent day and it's just a day of celebration of love and happiness. And it just, since there is so much war and tensions and um, stress in the world, so people just uh, appreciate this day as a day of, spreading love and happiness among people. But if we look at the history of this festival, we will see that um, there was once in the time of, uh, before even Prophet peace be upon him, this there was a festival which, is, which was called as Lupercalia Festival. And it used to be celebrated, it used to be celebrated by the pagans, the Roman pagans uh, from 13th to 15th February. And this was also called as the Feast of Lupercalia. Now, the, if you can see this picture, I have attached, this is the Lupercus, this picture. Lupercus uh, used to be in Roman mythology, God, he was God of flock and shepherds. And you can see this is half men up to the uh, upper trunk, he was a human being and the lower trunk, the lower limbs were that of goat and also with the two horns of the goat. So he was, the Bercus was supposed to be the god of uh, shepherd and uh, flock. And he, his basically, the basic attribute which was related to the Bercus was uh, of his, his lustful nature. So he was very famous for this. Um, the, the main attribute that he was attached to was lustful nature of this god. Um, the festival which he uh, which was being celebrated for Lupercus or Lupercalia festival, what ha what used to happen was the uh, men used to initially offer. Uh, okay, I won't be taking a uh, questions in between because it just interrupts. Inshallah, we will take the question in the end. So uh, basically, look in what what, what used to happen in this festival was that uh, the men used to offer sacrifice because it was a lord or it was a god of shepherd and flocks so they used to sacrifice dogs and uh, goats initially uh, as a sacrifice to their god lupercus and once they were done with the sacrifice then they used to take off the hides or the skin of the goats and sheep and with the blood dripping from that uh, hide they used to fold it or roll it in the form of a whip now, what they used to do, the men used to uh, be bare and naked, and then they used to run in the streets where women were already waiting for these men. And then these men would uh, smack the ladies. They would, you know, hit with the whip, not like very hard or uh, the torture type of whipping, but like they used to gently smack the ladies with these uh, whip-like structure that uh, that had blood on it from the sacrificed animals. And this used to be expected to increase the fertility or childbearing capacity in the females. So this was the festival of Lupercalia, which used to be celebrated from 13 to 15 February in uh, Roman pagans. So you have to remember this festival and then we will move to the next one and we will see how this was later on combined uh, to uh, give rise to the modern day Valentine Day. So I hope this festival is clear.
uh, it was basically based on sacrifice of these two animals. And then later on, the skins were taken off and with blood dripping from the skin, the men used to run naked in the streets, hitting the women with these uh, uh, skin whips. And uh, it was supposed to increase the fertility of the women. Now, the next festival was, and also if you uh, have seen some movies or some uh, you know documentaries or dramas related to the Greek and Roman mythology, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the stories about their gods, you will see that uh, there were a lot of movies like uh, there was a movie Percy Jackson. Uh, it had this Lupus, Lupercus character in it. So you might have seen a few movies or a few documentaries which showed this character, half uh, man and half goat, right? Then the next festival is the festival of Juno Febreta. Now, Febreta, uh, February basically is coming from the uh, name of this uh, lady whose picture I have attached. She used to be the goddess of fear, a uh, fever of love, marriage and women. So her name was Juno and she was also called as Februa. And from her name, then later on, uh, the month of February was named uh, upon this goddess of fever of love, marriage and women. So in this festival, what was happening was it, this was festival was celebrated on 15 February. And there was basically uh, since uh, the queen, this goddess belonged to the uh, women. So on this day, women would be, um, you know, their names were written on slips and these slips were later on put inside the ballot box and uh, there was a balloting. There was a kind of balloting done where men would pick up the names of uh, women on the slips and whoever uh, found a name of certain women on that slip, he was paired with that woman for sexual erotic games. And later on, if they want to stay together, sexual not only sexual erotic games, but for other sexual relationship as well. And these men and women would later, if they want to live together without any marriage or anything, just uh, live together for sexual pleasure. If they want to, to live together for a, a week, for a month, or up till the next year's event, they were okay with that. And a few of these couples then later on after a year or so might result in getting married. So this was basically an event which primarily focused on sexual uh, erotic games and uh, you know the the free living or free sexual uh, relationship without any marriage or anything. So this was the festival of Juno Febreta, which was uh, celebrated on fifteenth February of each year. Now we see that when we look around, uh, we, when we go out on Valentine Day and we see that there are different cards and different uh, greeting cards and posters and different, uh, uh, you know, the arrangements um, at shopping malls and at restaurants, we see this character Cupid, which is very highlighted in the story of Valentine Day and in the cards and in uh, the sh shopping wherever you go. So we need to know who is Cupid and then there is a, uh, another um, equal character who is uh, called Eros. So according to Roman mythology, now Rome and Greece, they were two different uh, places. So Roman mythology and Greek mythology has slight connections in between. But uh, again, they have few characters who, who were different. In Roman, they were presented as different person. And in the Greek mythology, they were presented as different person. So according to Roman mythology, this Cupid, I have attached the picture, this one. Cupid is basically uh, derived, the word Cupid is derived from cuprus, uh, cupri, which means desire. And Cupid is a god of erotic love, and he was uh, he's presented by a small, yeah, a small young angelic baby uh, who is usually naked. But now, since uh, we live in a civilized society, so now they have given him few clothes to wear uh, on posters and everywhere. But originally, he was always presented uh, as a naked young baby with two wings and a bow and an arrow in his hand. He was supposed to be born of uh, Venus, who was the goddess, the female goddess of love. So Eros uh, and Cupid, these are two characters. The Cupid is the baby presentation of this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, erotic love. And he was, uh, you know, he's presenting the um, overall love and lust and sex. Similarly, in Greek mythology, you can see this picture. Here, this one. In Greek mythology, Eros was a character. He was a substitute of Cupid and Eros means erotica. So he was basically the god of lust, love and sex, as you can see. Uh, he Again, he was also presented naked with uh, a bow and an arrow. 
and he was born out of the son, he was the son of Aphrodite who was the goddess of love and beauty now Aphrodite itself uh, as a term indicates it these are the substances which arose the sexual power or sexual uh, desires so when we study forensic medicine we study aphrodisiac agents which uh, are eatable materials or some medicines which increase the sexual arousal or sexual desires so aphrodisiac agents are definitely uh, you know the, uh, the uh, um, ingredients or the tablets like you might have heard about Vigra. Again, this is a tablet, which is an aphrodisiac tablet. So similarly, this person, Eros, this so-called god of lust, love, and sex, was the son of Aphrodite, who was the goddess of love and beauty. And he, uh, we, uh, the Greek mythology only mentions about uh, his mother. They don't know who clearly who uh, whose father, like who is the father of Eros. So people only know about his mother, that uh, Aphrodite was the mother, but they don't know who was the father. So again, we, we finally see that uh, in Greek and Roman mythology, the basic, basic concept that has been created is that, uh, uh, God forbid, the, the gods are like humans. So they have affairs, they have extramarital affairs, and then they give rise to um, out of wedlock children as well. So he was basically a god um, and what he used to do uh, was he used to play with the emotions of both gods and mortals. And uh, again, like, uh, in you know, uh, in the, uh, we see in the drama serials and, you know, the, what I say as star plus dramas, that he used to be very uh, filmy type uh, villain and hero type of person who, uh, hero type of god who used to uh, make sure that uh, sometimes the relationship or the love created between a couple is positive and then sometimes he would act like a villain uh, just like in case of he fell in he made uh, god Apollo fall in love with the nymph Daphne and then he made sure that the love remained one-sided so he used to in Greek mythology he used to act sometimes like a positive god and sometimes like a villain also in Greek mythology uh, we know that um, uh, they believe that uh, the god could fall in love with a mortal that is human. So when you study their stories, you come to know that there are uh, gods in Greek and Roman mythology where uh, the god would fall in love, the god or goddess would fall in love with somebody on earth, a man or a woman. And then without any marriage or anything, they would have a sexual relationship and the resulting individual born uh, would be called as demigods. Demigods are half gods and half human. So if you study a bit about these characters, their uh, mythology, you will find out that there are a lot of out of wedlock children, which were so-called born be uh, between the god and the humans, and they were called demigods. And they used to live with their parents on earth. So this is very funny and um, at the same time stupid, um, I'm, I must say, um, story where the god is actually acting like humans. They are having affairs, they are going out, they are having extramarital affairs, they are uh, having sexual relationship without any uh, marriage, um, and then they are giving birth to children who are uh, what we call as out of wedlock. So now we come to Saint Valentine. Uh, Saint Valentine basically was a priest in third century in Roman era. And in that time, uh, what happened was that there was an emperor called as Claudius II. What he did was that he felt that men who are married or uh, uh, who have women in their life, they do not fight in the in the wars with whole heart. They felt he just felt that they fight half-heartedly. So what he did was he introduced a law in the Roman Empire that men were not supposed to get married at all because he thought that this way men would fight more um, aggressively. So what started uh, happening was that young men, obviously there is an attraction between man and women. So young men, since they were not allowed uh, to get married, what they started doing was that they started getting into illicit relationship with the women. And seeing this, this priest, Saint Valentine, what he did was that he started secretly uh, uh, um, making them, uh, the uh, young couples, get married. He, he, he started uh, secretly offering this matrimonial services um, and make, helping them get married. When the uh, Roman uh, Claudius II emperor came to know about this, he, what he did was that he... Um, he put him in prison and not just precisely in prison. What he did was he um, imprisoned him in the home of a noble, from uh, in the home of a government official. What happened there was that this government official had a female child, female uh, girl, 
who was blind. And then St. Valentine helped her to treat the blindness. And then as a result, this whole family of the noble government official officer uh, accepted Christianity. Now, when the uh, prodigies too uh, heard about this, that the uh, whole family has turned into Christian and this thing is spreading, he ordered to execute uh, St. Valentine and St. Valentine was ex executed on 14th February. So before his execution, in some stories where I have done the research, this it's written that he wrote the last letter to that girl whom he treated, who was her, his patient. Uh, he treated her of blind for blindness so he wrote last letter to that uh, girl and in the end he wrote you from your valentine so it's just like when we write an application or a letter to someone we write in the end yours sincerely or yours obediently so similarly he wrote in the end uh, your valentine so valentine was, was of course his name and in some stories it is uh, in, in the history it's written that he wrote the last letter to the last couple that he made get married and he wrote them last letter and in the end of the letter he wrote from your valentine so this was the story of saint valentine so now we have a series of events which are connected from 13 to 15, 15 february first was uh, the festival of lupercalia which was in the, which was celebrated from 13 to 15 february mm -hmm. then we have uh, the festival of juno februata uh, who was the queen, uh, who was the, sorry, goddess, and uh, her event was celebrated on 15 February. And then we have Saint Valentine, who was an innocent priest who used to uh, help people uh, get away from Haram, and uh, he used to make them get married, uh, and he was executed on 14 February. So now these three events you should keep in your mind, and we will see what is Valentine Day. So in uh, 494 AD, Pope Gelesius, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Uh, Gelesius I, he changed these two pagan festivals by Christianizing them. So since these were very famous pagan festival and they have been there since ages, like since a long, long time and people were actually not ready to give them up. It's just like the fact that, um, you know, uh, there are some certain school of thoughts who have legalized or who have uh, uh, accepted that celebration of the prophet peace be upon him's birthday which is also called as Eid Miladun Nabi or Molid is legal in Islam although we know that birthdays or these things are not legal we do not find any proof of it from Quran and Sunnah and this was basically uh, a cheating uh, it, it was following the way of Christians where Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus on the 25th September uh, so 25th December uh, by the event which is called as Christmas so they celebrate the birth of son of God uh, on the 25th December, uh, which is called Christmas. So the Muslims actually, uh, some Muslims, some deviant groups actually copied this concept from Christianity and, and tried to introduce it into Islam by the name of Maulid or Eid Milad al-Nabi. And they started celebrating the birthday of Prophet peace be upon him, which he in himself or the Sahaba Karam or the uh, the righteous generation of Tabin and Tabit Tabin, they never celebrated the birthday of Prophet peace be upon him or anyone. So again, similar thing was done by Pope Gelasius. And what he did was that since it was a very famous uh, festival, these two festivals, and he did not uh, want to offend the people. So what he did was that he Christianized these two festivals and he introduced a feast of purification of Virgin Mary. Can you imagine that uh, he introduced the, the same festival, the Lupercalia festival was renamed as Feast of Purification of Virgin Mary. Now, we know that since we have studied the Feast of Lupercalia, we know that it's a very, uh, you know, filthy kind of uh, event. And how could you just, in, in you know, try to label it as sort of in Christianity halal, you just change its name by uh, uh, introducing the name of uh, Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam in that. So similarly, what he did was, did was that the Feast of uh, Lupercalia was renamed as Feast of Purification of Virgin Mary by this Pope. And the Festival of Juno Februata, which was uh, actually uh, taking place on 15th, he changed the name uh, it to uh, as St. Valentine Day. Again, introducing a name of an innocent priest, uh, you know, a good practicing Christian priest's name. Uh, to the to this um, Juno Februata festival was kind of Christianizing the event, just labeling it as halal. 
for the Christians. And he changed the date from 15 to 14. So whatever was happening from 13 to 15 February, th this Pope, he legalized it into Christianity by changing the names and finally summing up both these events from 13 to 15 and 15 February to the center one where uh, St. Valentine was executed. So just using that label of that saint, he introduced this day, 14th February as Valentine's Day. So this is basically the history of what's going on. So it seems to be an uh, innocent day by helping young people to, you know, uh, enjoy the love and happiness and all these things. But basically, when you see the background of it, it's just promoting open sexuality, uh, which was taking place in uh, the festival of Lupercalia and Juno Febrate. So what's happening is basically that uh, since the the um, uh, you know the tradition of sex open sexuality and loose end relationship and the haram thing is continuing from that festivals uh, since to, uh, up till today so basically this day the valentine day uh, we see that more and more people commit sins related to sexuality fornication and adultery than any other day uh, of the year and as we will see that what this day is impact how this day is impacting the physical, emotional, and sexual life of people, along with the social life as well, and along with their psychiatric status. Um, this is basically uh, just putting everything upside down. So um, now there is a new concept which you will, you might be hearing uh, or coming across is that now people say that the Valentine Day is not just for your Valentine. It's it You can celebrate your Valentine Day with your brother, you, with your father, you, with your mother, or your same-sex, you know, female friends. So whoever knows the background of this uh, thing, the filth behind this event, they would actually curse themselves if they would just go and give a Valentine Day card to their father or their brother or their sister because we know that it, 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 this is not meant to be celebrated with your uh, mehrams or you know with the people around you who are actually your uh, part of your family. So this is a new concept that is being brought that Valentine Day is not just for Valentine, it's, it's for anyone you love. You can just give a Valentine Day card to your father. So this is the new concept that's coming, uh, we are coming across as, uh, as we are growing in the society. Now we have to look at the process of growth. Uh, ever since humans were sent on earth from Hazrat Adam alayhi salam till today, we, we know that different societies have different ways of bringing up children, but there has been few common things which were always there and were always appreciated, which were on fitra or uh, uh, they were, you know, the natural way of bringing up the children. So it always started with small kids and then they would grow up, they would start learning skills, they would, um, you know, interact with the uh, environment through touching things, by looking at things, observing things. And then they would slowly acquire education, not just the ones who are going to school or homeschooling, but also people who are living in jungles or in far-fetched areas. They would acquire education by... Uh, being with their parents, learning the skills, learning how uh, the reality of different things. And uh, the acquiring education was a part of growing up, that you know the reality of how the universe works, how the things work. Uh, with education, physical fitness was also being emphasized in uh, uh, growing children because obviously they would have to build an immunity. They would have to learn to uh, you know, run and walk and play games. And the physical fitness was al always a part of this, which would later on, as the child would grow, he would grow mentally and also his hormonal status would change. And as the hormone changes, uh, slowly he would learn to uh, explore his sexuality or his, you know, uh, the hormonal, uh, the secondary sexual characters, like in case of uh, girls, the breast development or the menstruation would take place. And in case of boys, they would get beard or, uh, you know, the uh, hair in pubic area or underarms and also deepening of voice. So these were the stages of growth that they would they were always there. And as the hormonal growth would take place, then slowly and gradually, the child would know of the relationship between a male and a female and how things work out between the two opposite sexes. But as the society is growing, we see that now day by day, this uh, they, there were always things in the foreground and then the background. So the foreground was obviously the more important things like, uh, you know, uh, the character building, the uh, consciousness of God, the you know the more important things like uh, how to survive in this world and not to get indulged into sins and 
the right and the wrong compass. These were in the foreground. And the background, there was always other things like love and, you know, the sexual side. And these things were given less importance. But now what's happening is that the things are being changed. The foreground is becoming the background and the background is being brought into the foreground. So now we see that more importance is being given to sexuality, the gender and these issues that we discussed even in our LGBT class, that um, these things were important, but never the major part of the life. They were important, but they were always in the background. Uh, people would learn about it as they would grow. But what's happening now is that the love, gender, attraction, sexuality, these things have been uh, 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 given importance in a very early age, like children who are maybe four, five years, six years old. Now people are uh, bringing up their children as gender fluid, like we dis discussed in the other class, that they uh, think that the ba baby will grow up and find whoever he wants to be. He wants to be a man or woman. Or if he is uh, 10 or 11 years old, or she is 10 or 11 year old, they would learn through social media or through different uh, TV drama serials or cartoons and everything that sexuality is a very important thing and one should have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or somebody around of opposite sex and sometimes the same sex some, uh, um, since we know that homosexuality is also growing. So these things are being imposed on very young minds at a very early age where they are incapable of differentiating between the right and left. So what we see is that this society is turning upside down. The sexual thing is becoming more important and the rest of the important things are becoming less important. People are not no more concerned, young generation is no more concerned about what they would want to grow up as in their life, their professions, their uh, life of dunya or ahura, their religious side. These are just going into the background. So what's happening is that we know that based in uh, psychology, the, the basic human, in, uh, the basic animal instincts are basic hunger, sex and sleep. These are the basic animal instincts. But the human beings are made for uh, things above this level. They are not made for the same purpose which animals have. But most of the society uh, is growing up into, um, you, you can say, in, a, in the law of jungle, that the humans are now being told that hunger, sex, and sleep is the basic thing that you have to worry about. So whole of the industries are thriving upon this hunger, like food-based business. They're coming up with all kinds of junk foods and they are making people believe that if you don't eat this kind of food, you will not have happiness in your life or you would you will not have accomplished good things in your life. Similarly, uh, the industries related to sex, they are promoting different kinds of sexual ideas. They are promoting porn. They are promoting different kinds of odd uh, behavior. Uh, the the dark web is working on it. So this is kind of a whole industry which is making sex as the ultimate part of the life. Like uh, you, you uh, according to them, if you will not have a good sex, you will die. So they are promoting this idea. Similarly, in uh, if we come across sleep. Again, we know that sleep is important, but there is a whole industry which is working on tranquilizers and antidepressants and, you know, sleep working improvement pattern. So human beings have always had hunger, sex and sleep, and there was no problem in that. Things were going fine because the, the other things were more important. But now these things are brought up uh, in the front side, a front, uh, you know, the, the more important side of the uh, life. And people think that this is the only thing that they have to worry about. So humans are now being, you know, very, very becoming similar to animals. If you see the level of frustration or if you come across the level of thinking, the human uh, mind is thinking, they are uh, just concerned about the hunger, sex and sleep. Quick researches I would like to share with you. If you just go on Google and uh, search about this Valentine Day, uh, psychological and other financial matters. Uh, there are a few researches that I came across which were very funny, actually, and I could not share it uh, in the class. They were related to um, the hospital admissions after Valentine's Day um, regarding the different types of experiments people do uh, in their sexual acts and then end up in hospital theater. Sometimes people would uh, make, you know, um, just to make the environment very romantic, they would light up candles and then end up burning their houses because of that. So there was a kind of funny kind of research. Um, um, a serious one I would like to share with you is from IBIS World. It's a it's an institute or it's a, you know, it's a company that deals with the investment and banking and, you know, the marketing sales um, details. So uh, they say that an average annual Valentine Day's expenditure uh, just on Valentine Day for the Valentine Day purchases is <clears throat> around $13 billion. 
where, uh, where an average consumer spends around $116.21. So we know that in case of USA or UK, 100 pounds or $100 is a big amount. Like for an every person to spend this much on a single day for a purchasing of gift, this is a big amount for people living in USA or UK. And according to their recent research, uh, last year's sale for Valentine's Day was 17.6 billion. And this year, it's for today, they have expected it to be 18.6 billion dollars. So we should know that basically this day is uh, not really related to love it's more of a bargaining day it's like a barter trade day where you would give something and then in return you would receive something so it's more like a business day rather than a um, you know a, a love sharing day there's another interesting statistic research where uh, it says that 53% of women would end up their relationship if we, if they did not get something for valentine day so we see that Valentine's Day is uh, not really uh, a day of love uh, and it's basically exploiting the feelings of love and it's more about materialism. So what you get that that depends uh, that actually controls how your relationship will follow uh, for the rest of the year till the next Valentine's Day. Also, there was a research conducted uh, on teenagers in the UK, which states that 61 percent of youngsters reported a negative impact on how comfortable they feel with their personalities as per response they get on Valentine's Day. So their uh, perception about their own self, their own uh, looks or the body is now connected with how people would uh, treat them on Valentine's Day. Similarly, 59% said that they, that made them feel embarrassed or unattractive, while 65% of the teens who received a card said it made them feel better about themselves on the day. So again, their happiness and their sorrow or their uh, perception about themselves is getting connected with how people, uh, if they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or how people um, treat them on such kind of days. 45% of teens cited that love and relationship as their greatest cause of concern and stress. Now, instead of in our times, people, again, there were people who were concerned about this in their teenage, but uh, the main emphasis was basically on, um, you know, the career and what you want to become when you grow up and these kind of things. But now, 45% of teens think that these things are rather more important and they are a cause of stress and concern for them. In another study, there was a survey uh, conducted uh, um, where 245 undergraduate students reviewed their relationship one week before and one week after Valentine's and they found that the relationships which were not actually going to end once a Valentine's Day came in between. These relationships which were going through a rough time but not like a very, you know, at the verge of ending, they would uh, result into breakups. So that means that same type of relationships that were likely to continue during a non valentine Day period uh, time period would break up during a Valentine's Day period just because of not getting enough attention or not getting enough uh, gifts. So what's happening uh, if you look at the social level? What is this innocent day doing to people? Basically, if you switch on channel today, you will see that the mainstream media, uh, even not just today, in general, I, I see it uh, going on. Um, that the, the mainstream media is what, what is it showing if, if you look at a drama or if you look at a, you know, just even uh, the TV commercials, if you look at it, it has been shown that the loose end or uncommitted, uh, the boyfriend girlfriend relationships are very cute and they are very, you know, people are happy and they are very lovable kind of uh, uh, emotions. And on the other side, what they are trying to portray is that. Uh, if you look at an, any commercial or any TV drama or any movie where a married couple is shown, it is always shown that the woman is very uh, crabby or the man is going out with other women and having extra married affairs. So what they are trying to portray is that the loose end relationships are good and they are very enjoyable. And uh, the marriage is basically nuisance. And whenever you get married, you get in, into a lot of trouble and the emotions are gone and the love is gone and it's all just about bills and fighting and these things. So they are putting this thing in the in the young generation minds that companionship is better than marriage. This is the um, message that they have been, um, uh, you know, they, they are basically trying to input in the young people's mind. Similarly, married individuals, such kind of days when you see hearts everywhere, red flowers, everyone is going out on dates. The married couples are again, um, they have, obviously, you, we, we know that devil is with everyone. So what happens is that married individuals are inspired to have extra marital affairs. And they also start going out on dates 
or uh, you know having a fair or going out uh, on valentine day celebrating this day buying and giving gifts and other things as well so these things are making the married couples go into result into divorces or having extra marital affair which is again um, uh, a real major sin because you already have uh, a person a wife or a husband sitting at home who loves you who care for you and then you are going out just because of the peer pressure or just because everyone else is doing the sin you are inspired by it and then you are ruining your own family so um, again those who do not have love we have talked about single ones and we have talked about the marital ones now the next the next kind of people who are being affected with this thing is those who do not have any valentine uh, on this day those who do not have anyone to celebrate this day they get depressed and are given a feeling of being a loser they think that they are not worth it they are not worth being in love with someone or uh, they are not worth uh, being taken up right so again this is resulting into depression so some are falling into sin some are falling into depression similarly comparison uh, there are people around us who are not celebrating this day but again uh, especially the women they go out on facebook and social media and instagram and they see other people celebrating this day so this gives them a sense of depression or a sense of comparison they start comparing their husbands or their wives with those who uh, they see on facebook or instagram and what they what they start feeling is that okay uh, like my husband gave me just a flower and see this friend of mine she got diamond ring so these kind of comparison starts uh, inflicting the especially ladies and what this ha what happens is that you start mirroring your husband's or wife's love in terms of materialistic materialistic things in terms of money in terms of how much big or expensive gift your husband or wife has got you so this results into a uh, depression again and also the gratitude of uh, a loving family slowly fades away the next thing is that for this day both married and single single couples have a pressure of collecting sum of money now today in this world we see that inflation is rising and everybody is concerned about uh, the electricity bills the gas bills and you know the uh, the grocery and the prices but again there is a peer pressure i must say free peer pressure because again the pressure uh, of uh, watching other couples celebrate this day or on the social media or on the uh, netflix these movies are continuously being run up whole day so uh, there is a pressure of saving money and buying something for your loved ones for your boyfriend girlfriend or for your husband and wife because everybody else is doing that so in this day of where it's really hard to meet the both and meet it's really hard to um, you know buy the groceries and electricity bills people are put into uh, put under extra pressure of saving money and buying expensive and sparkly gifts for their loved ones similarly when such kind of events takes place there is a certain group there is always a criminal group there is always a negative uh, thinking group which is working alongside with the uh, cute and so called innocent group so the criminal minds use this kind of opportunities where a, there is a general concept between young girls and boys that they should have somebody who would spend a lot of money on them who would give them gifts and buy them expensive gift and in return will uh, ask nothing except love from them so the criminal minded people um, use this opportunity and they exploit the feelings of young girls and boys and this ultimately results into blackmailing rape and other kind of different criminal criminal offenses which are attached to uh, such feelings which are being marketed by uh, the government and the uh, local and private uh, national and international uh, companies also people lying to their families from uh, on this day from uh, from the very small thing that uh, they just want to go out they start lying from there and then they go out on date and then they do big or small things uh, uh, depending upon their level of modesty and then they come back then they start bragging about it to their friends so it the, the day starts with the sin and ends at sin so there is nothing really good going on on this day except we as muslims we, we will see that this day for people who celebrate it st starts with uh, probably a minor sin and may end up uh, into a major sin so this is something that uh, and, and should not be neglected about this day 
Similarly, Dr. Jennifer, who is a senior clinical manager at Executive Mental Health USA, this is an institute, it's a hospital in USA, which deals with the mental health. She expressed her concern that it really reinforces this idea that men are only good as their purchasing power. And then in return for that purchasing power, he gets sex or at least something sexual. He's not just a household provider, but as the one who provides these big gifts in order to maintain a woman's attention, especially her sexual attention. And presumably, presumably, if he gets it wrong, then there will be less attention in sex. So this is her concern, which she, she has shared on social media about this day, that men are then considered to be good. Uh, in, in, there was a time when, uh, you know, uh, getting married to a man, people would look at his character. But now, uh, even the parents, they look at uh, how much he earns and uh, does he own a home, uh, a car. And, you know, the business, uh, how much he's making money. So the concept of character and earning of halal and haram is gone now. People are more into how much a man can afford. And even the women, even the wives, they are more concerned about how much money. And they, they're not concerned about how he's bringing, it, uh, uh, bringing that money. But they are just concerned about how much he's bringing and how much he's spending on her. And that is basically determined the level of love the wife is providing to her husband. So the money is basic. The materialism is there. The emotions are gone. Similarly, these were the you know these were the social sides. If you look at the medical side, so these things, the Valentine Day and such kind of events, which are promoting sexuality and fornication, adultery, and all kind of filthy stuff, these are resulted in, resulting into increased percentage of sexually transmitted disease among youngsters and married and unmarried, uh, both type of couples. So basically, because this is promoting the sexual side of uh, uh, the the human sexual desire so sexually transmitted disease are uh, on the verge of increasing now similarly abortion and rapes are again um, reported to be increased after and if you look at the hospital statistics they increase after this valentine day in the next one to two months there will be rise in the cases of abortions and rapes uh, documentation both similarly you know, the hunt for finding love of life is slowly pushing the young generation to increase depression, drugs, and suicide. And the proof of this will be this screenshot. This I got from CNN.com, where uh, this is the news from 2005, February 13th, where this guy, uh, which who is called Gerald Cren, he's 26 and has, has no prior criminal record. This guy, uh, along with, he has he had basically planned a whole uh, online mass uh, suicidal uh, arrangement you know meeting uh, where people would be uh, they plan to commit live suicide on internet uh, due to depression of being alone or single on valentine day and if you just read the last line of this this one of this screenshot it says among those who agreed to kill themselves was a mother who also planned to kill her two young children so this guy was being, uh, you know, the, the authority, the police um, arrested him and then they had they ran a trial over him. And he later on uh, told that people from Canada, Britain and US, the single people, they were all committed. They had signed a pact with him that they will commit uh, uh, mass suicide or, you know, group suicide live on internet on 14th February uh, in depression of being alone on Valentine's Day. So you can see how this is affecting the psychological, um, you know, the, the, uh, the it's building continuously, uh, uh, you know, drop by drop, it's building this depression in the minds of people where they start realizing that they're alone and they don't have anyone to love them. Now let's see the Islamic stance. We see that Islam strictly forbids celebrating disbelievers festival because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give up, uh, forgive all the sins except shirk, uh, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now uh, we see that when we see the history of Valentine Day, this day is based on the sexuality and filth which Allah has forbidden. And along with that, this sexuality and filth was being celebrated uh, in the honor of the uh, multiple gods, gods of sexuality, gods of love, god of lust, erotic uh, love, and, you know, uh, the false gods. So this type of uh, celebration definitely comes under the heading of uh, being a partner in shirk, celebrating that shirk. Like if somebody is celebrating Christmas, they are basically uh, celebrating the birth of 
uh, son of God. So whoever is celebrating Christmas, whoever is celebrating Valentine's Day, they are basically doing a shirk. It's not just a simple love or a happiness festival. It's a festival which was attached to false gods. Uh, it was a festival that was attached to honoring these gods and uh, offering special sacrifices to these gods. So um, we see in Surah Hajj, Ayah number 67, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for every nation we have ordained religious ceremonies which they must follow. So there is a pathway, there is a way of expressing uh, the religious, you know, uh, the way of uh, offering an ibadah which Allah, ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for, for Muslims. And whoever uh, deviates from that path is not from among us. This is, again, we will see in further ayahs. In Surah Ashura, ayah number 20, 21, Allah Taala says, Or have they partners with Allah, false gods, who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not allowed? So again, uh, something that is uh, a, a tradition of a pagan uh, religion, and whoever repeats that is definitely associating uh, those gods, those false gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Jasiya, ayah number 18 and 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then we have put you, O Muhammad, on a plain way of our commandment. So follow that and follow not the desires of those who know not. Verily, they can avail you nothing against Allah if he wants to punish you. Verily, the wrongdoers are protectors to one another, but Allah is the protector of the pious. So wh whoever uh, contributes with each other or supports each other in these sins, in these pagan or in disbelievers festival is part of them. In Surah Maida, ayah number 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as Aliyah, friends, protectors or helpers. They are but Aliyah of each other. And if any among you takes them as Aliyah, then surely he is one of them. Verily, Allah guides not those people who are Zalimun, polytheist and wrongdoers and unjust. So whoever takes part in such kind of festival should always remember that he will uh, be taken out from the mercy of Allah uh, in, in the aspect that Allah will not guide them. Uh, in Surah Al-Imran, ayah number 118, Allah Ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, take not as your uh, bitana. Bitana means advisors, consultants, protectors, helpers, friends. Those outside your religion, such as pagans, Jews, Christians, and hypocrites. Since they will not fail to do their best to corrupt you, they desire to harm you swearly. Hatred has already appeared from their mouths, but what their breasts conceal is far worse. Indeed, we have made plain to you the ayah, proofs, evidence, verses, if you understand. This ayah basically shows that since if, if we just look around, we know that the main agenda on which the disbelievers are working is to spread immorality and dishonesty among our young generation. We also know that Salauddin Ayyubi, who was a very famous warrior, Muslim warrior who conquered Jerusalem, he once said that if, he, if you want to corrupt any nation or if you want to uh, bring a downfall in, in any nation, just introduce immorality and adultery fornication into um, that in the youth of that uh, community or nation. So it, th that, uh, that filth will be enough to just pour on the downfall of that community or nation. Similarly, in uh, Ayah uh, 19 of Surah Noor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who love that indecency should spread among the believers, deserve a painful uh, punishment, basically, chastisement uh, in the world and the hereafter. So whoever supports this, these kinds of festivals, such as Valentine Day, Halloween, Christmas, or New Year, or any such festival which are related to false god or the disbelievers, uh, and tried, and these basically are uh, connected to spreading the immorality among the Muslims, among the Muslim um, Ummah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they should be ready for a painful punishment, uh, both in this world and hereafter. Uh, in ayah num uh, number 22 of Surah Mujadala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You, O Muhammad, will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day, making friendship with those who oppose Allah and his messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him, even though they were uh, they were their fathers or their son or their brothers or the, their kindred people. For such, he has written faith in their hearts. That means whoever, whoever has love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet, peace be upon him, will never never be friend or never uh, take uh, allies uh, or the, uh, the enemies of Islam. 
in surah mumtahana ayah number 1 allah says oh you believe take not enemies and your enemies that is disbelief my enemies and your enemies that is disbelievers and polytheists as friends showing affection affection towards them while they have disbelief in what has come to you of the truth um in surah fatiha ayah number 6 and 7 which we recite uh, five times uh, when we pray in our salah we recite this and we ask idin siratal mustaqim siratal ladina anamta alayhim So we say that guide us to the right path, the path of those upon whom you bestowed favor, not uh, of those who have evoked your anger or those who went as astray. So um, the people who are uh, magzub are basically the Jews or the Bani Israel, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is angry upon them, and while the Zalim are the misguided ones, the ones who have gone astray. Uh, these are basically the Christians who have uh, made. who have believed that prophet jesus uh, alayhi salam who was the prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala uh, they have regarded him as uh, nauzubillah son of god in surah maida ayah number 2 allah says and cooperate in righteousness and piety but do not cooperate in sin and aggression fear allah indeed allah is swear in penalty now what this ayah means that whoever maybe there are people around us who are not celebrating valentine day but they might be cooperating with the uh, people who are uh, into this sin so what they are doing is they might be uh, like if suppose i have a clinic and i start uh, giving discounts on valentine day on my laser treatments so what will happen is that Uh, even though i'm not participating in this um, valentine day uh, i'm not celebrating it but since i'm offering discounts on this day so i'm promoting this so i will be equally responsible in sin uh, with those who are celebrating because i am promoting this day so promoting promoting or cooperating in uh, sin aggression is again another sin in hadith we see uh, first we have to know that who are who sunna is, are we following would we like to follow the sunna of prophet peace be upon him or being muslims we would follow the sunna of pagan and christians so we see that in abu daud um, hadith number 1134 anas radhiyallahu anhu talana said when the messenger of allah peace be upon him came to medina they had two days when they would play he said what are these two days they said we used to play on these days during jahal jahiliya the messenger of allah peace be upon him said allah has given you instead of these two days that are better than them the day of allah azza uh, means eid ul azza and eid ul fitr uh, in abu daud 4031 prophet peace be upon him said whoever imitates a uh, people is one of them so whoever is following a whoever is doing a blind following to disbelievers a prophet peace be upon him says he is one of them so whoever follows uh, such events and such days definitely he will be from among them the prophet peace be upon him said just a minute the prophet peace be upon him said um uh, uh, he basically warned uh, the people uh, of his ummah about the coming up traditions he said you would follow the ways of those who came before you step by step to such an extent that if they were to enter a lizard hole you would enter in it too they said oh messenger of allah do you mean the jews and christians he said who else it is reported by bukhari and muslim so we need, we see that these days nowadays our young generation our people are so much impressed by the disbelievers in the west that whatever they do we blindly follow them without looking at the fact that if that thing with which we are following is halal or haram and our religion uh, approves of it or not we don't care in uh, bukhari and muslim uh, prophet peace be upon him said no man should be alone with a woman unless there is a mahram with them and similarly in tirmizi uh, he said no man is alone with a woman but the shaitan is the third one bit so even in medical um, treatments when when we are uh, studying the medicine we are being ethically advised that if we have a, being a female doctor if we have a male patient and we have to examine that male patient we should never be alone in room with that male patient we should always have either a female um, uh, you know a member of th- that patient female uh, attendant of that patient in the room or we should have a male nurse or male uh, you know some some male doctor with us if we have to exam- examine that male patient so even a doctor female and male patient uh, doctor relationship is there but they should not be alone in single room they should have uh, a third person either uh, an, a female attendant or a male nurse along with the doctor female doctor to uh, be in that room uh, to avoid any uncomfortable situations um what does islam say about love 
So the first thing that we have to understand is that sex is not for free in Islam. What does that mean? It means that if you want to have sex, um, there is a there is a complete um, you know system that you have to go through. You have to take responsibility. You have to accept that women or men uh, in front of uh, the world that you are taking them as your wife or your husband. And then you have to take on the responsibilities. You have to um, take on the responsibility of a husband or wife. And this responsibility, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, he says in um, Surah Bakra, ayah number 187, that uh, they, your wives, are your garment and you are the garment for them. Now, the word libas or garment is used. This is a very sweet word. We see that libas, what does it do? It, it does for us is it hides our uh, defects. It protects us from cold and warm. It also uh, is basically an adornment for us. And the, the libas or the dress is the thing that is closest to our body. So basically, husband and wife are a kind of libas for each other. They are kind of a garment for each other because they cover each other's defects. They cover each other, uh, help each other or stand with each other through thick and thin of life. They are an adornment or a kind of modesty for each other. And also, uh, they are the closest to each other physically, mentally, and emotionally. So Islam basically supports sexual relationship and love between man and woman for the betterment of society. And it says that to husband and wife, which is the basic building unit of the society, uh, they, they have to be with each other. They have to stand through thick and thin. And then once they have their babies, they have a special gender roles. Uh, with mother being the uh, head of uh, the, you know, the tarbiya and the uh, parenting, while the father being the head of the financial um, uh, things going on in the house. And also he, he has the duty of protecting the family from the uh, trials and fitnas of this world. So this is a proper Sharia, you know, there is a, uh, this is a complete neatly weaved pattern, which uh, the Sharia has provided for a building block of the society, which is a home. In contrast to West, where, when we see that people talk about women liberation uh, from the Institute of Marriage, we say that women are being used as a disposable commodity where they can be uh, used for having sex and then they have children and the boyfriend or sometimes even the husband, they run away or have extramarital affair. And most of the women living in West are living the life of a single parent. So we, when when we take insp uh, you know inspiration, we take inspiration from the Prophet's life. We take the inspiration as Muslim from the life of um, the the Sirat al Nabi. We see that Prophet peace be upon him used to support his wife. He used to play ga games with them, uh, like we know that Hazrat Aisha radhiyallahu anha. Prophet used to race with her. He also used to help uh, his wife with the household work, took them along in journeys, sometimes to Ghazwat. And similarly, on the same time, the Muhatul Mumineen used to stand with him on through thick and thin, and they would not uh, you know, complain about things unnecessarily. And this is how basically love in Islam is portrayed. So generally, the disbelievers think that Islam is all about only jihad and fighting and, you know, the tanks and uh, rockets firing and terrorism. But Islam does support love, but in a halal way. Because Islam says that human beings have higher purposes in life. Love is necessary, but love has to be in the background. It, it is not the only main thing. Like when we see, uh, we study the English literature or Urdu literature in our schools, we say that, we see that uh, the children are being taught Romeo Juliet or in Eastern and Pakistani culture, we are being taught He Ranja or Sasi Panu or such kind of, you know, romantic novels. So what, what's happening is that these uh, novels are making young generation and these stories are making them think that, uh, you know, the love is the ultimate thing. And um, we see that they are promoting the haram concept of a girl and a boy seeing uh, each other and meeting each other secretly, talking to each other and secretly, you know, the running away from home. These, uh, these literature novels are basically putting immorality in the mind of young children. They are being presented as role models for young children who are too naive to understand that uh, honor, modesty, and um, the, the real love comes with marriage. The marriage is basically the final destiny of the love. How can we protect ourselves? The, uh, just a quick review. Uh, we have to raise our children by giving them knowledge of religion, but not just the uh, the fake and the, uh, you know, the namaz and roza. We have to tell them the real concept of love in Islam. And we, we as mothers and sisters have to study about the love, the rights, and duties of 
uh, spouses in Islam because until unless we know we will not be able to guide the young children or our sisters and brothers about this matter. Uh, we have to uh, make uh, develop a good moral compass in them for identifying the good and bad in front of them from a very early age. We have to tell them that lying is a bad thing, telling the truth no matter what is a good thing. So such kind of, you know, baby steps we have to start from the beginning. We have to also build them consciousness of Allah. We have to tell them that even if the mother and father are not watching them uh, do certain things, we have to tell them that Allah is watching and the angels sitting on our shoulders are writing and recording everything. So uh, even the parents are not aware of something, we have to teach our children that even if we are not watching, Allah is watching. So they should have an idea right from the start that no matter what they try to hide from their parents or their responsible person, Allah is watching and he knows what's happening. Also keep an eye on their friends and who are they hanging out uh, who are they talking to on phones and on their chats and what kind of content they are watching, especially in the days where homosexuality is growing very uh, rapidly. Uh, we have to protect our children from the heterosexual uh, haram relation and uh, the homosexual haram relation, both. Um, also give them confidence about how they look, that they're beautiful and wonderful wonderful person and uh, the right things come with the right time, uh, on the right time. So a lot of young girls ask me about their skin and they are having acne and I just tell them that since you are going through puberty, this is hormonal imbalance and your acne will inshallah go away as soon as you grow up and you grow out of your uh, teen ages. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, again, the style, the look, the beauty, it comes with age. It's not uh, possible that somebody who is 10 years old or 11 years old you know, would look like a, a model who is 24 year old. So things come with age. So teach your children that they will start taking, they should start taking care of themselves. But few things in life comes with age, comes with uh, the settlement of hormones and how they look. Just tell them that they, they look pretty the way they are. Um, just a bit of grooming is good enough. Also teach them that love's de destination is marriage and marriage comes with responsibility. So first they should become responsible and then you will support them with whoever they like to get married to. Um, but in, in uh, assuring them of this thing, you have to build in again this compass within themselves that they have to give priority to character and righteousness in people instead of beauty, money, status and fame. Because, uh, uh, you know, Islam does support uh, if somebody likes someone and would want to get married to that girl or boy. But you have to teach your children that in order to select a potential spouse, uh, if they like someone, they should know that that person they are, uh, they are opting for or they would want to get married to is good in character and in religion, uh, religious morals, moral values. It, they should not be selecting a potential spouse on the basis of beauty, money or fame or, you know, such kind of worldly materialistic thing. Because we know that um, th this is becoming very common. Girls are more interested in getting married to guys who are very good looking or who have a lot of money. And they would uh, rather don't care about wh where that money is coming from. So we have to teach our children that character and moral values in a person are the basic thing you have to look for if you like someone. Also, if they like someone and you feel they are grown up enough, then do not make marriage late just because they have to build a castle or become a CEO of a company. So sometimes we see that children, they are grown up, they're in, in their 19s, 20s, and uh, we see that they are having physical de desires and they are growing up and it's better to get them married. But then again, parents have a worldly pressure and they want to see their children become a CEO or, you know, build up their career. So do not wait for that because if they indulge, God forbid, into something haram, you will be equally responsible for what uh, for the mess they are creating in their afterlife. This is our last slide. Uh, in Surah Hud, ayah number 113, Allah Taala says, and incline not towards those who do wrong, lest the fire should touch you and you have no protectors other than Allah, nor you would then be helped. So this is uh, um, the ayah that I wanted to close the class with because uh, the the uh, do, the wrongdoing is not just in case uh, we study the word Zalimun. It's not somebody who is killing people or robbing people. It's also people who are supporting each other in acts of disobedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the sins, uh, even minor sins or major sins both. So we, sh we should not be inclined to anything which would uh, bring uh, the wrath of Allah over us. Um, I hope I was able to communicate the history and the effects and side effects of Valentine Day 
um, to you. And I hope that you understood where is it coming from. Any question? Any something uh, you would like to ask or something that you did not understand? I think um, you understand enough. And I hope that whatever you have studied, you will uh, pass on to people onward um, to make it a Sadka Jariya for you. We have to teach our children about these days because this is becoming very glamorous. And this is actually making them um, deviate from the path of uh, the Islam. Uh, Nasra, you raised hand, please. Uh, yes, Dr. Sadia, it was really, really very nice information to listen. But I just want to uh, make sure, can we uh, uh, transfer or forward your uh, slide or your, you know, the, the pictures from here? Yes, yeah, sure. You're most welcome. For public awareness, we, we do want people to learn about it and spread the word mm -hmm. because this is for public awareness. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And inshallah, if you have any question, you can uh, talk to me on WhatsApp group. You can ask me a question and you are most welcome. You can um, share these slides with somebody, even small, making small clips out of this uh, presentation. If you want, you can just go uh, and uh, do the screen recording and forward it to your whoever you want to send it to. Jazakallah uh, khair for attending the class lecture. Inshallah, the next topic we will be um, doing in public awareness, I will tell you about it on my WhatsApp group. Jazakallah uh, khair. Inshallah, I will meet you again next month. Till then, take care of yourself. Um, and any questions, you're most welcome. Thank you so much for attending. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.